our lives. Young people have to deal with them. Older people have to deal with them. It, it, it is the quest of this life to settle my identification with Christ because my identification with Christ will trump and overcome all other identifications in my life. In my life. That's what I've discovered that I want to download into you desperately because I know what it will do for you. I know how to change everything in your life. All right? Our first major identification... Our first major identification is what I call short-term identification. That's your parents and your grandparents. Your parents and your grandparents. You are white because your parents were white. You are black because your parents were black. Your hair's a certain way because your parents genetically caused that to be passed down to you. The bone structure you have, etc., etc. Many things about you came from your identification now with your parents. Watch this. Some of those things can be changed. Most have to be overcome. If you were born white, you can't change the color of your skin. Other than Michael Jackson, nobody else gets a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Let that one go. Basically, if you're born black, that is a short-term identification with your parents. And if you're born white, that's your short-term identification with your parents. But notice that that identification can shape who you think you are now and your identity. Your physical features, the color of your eyes. Uh, many, many of us, again, our short-term identity was poverty because we were born into poverty. But we can change that. Some worse than that, you were born into an affluent life and didn't have a balance on it, so you're arrogant, rude, self-righteous, better than others. you got to overcome that. Amen? That came from a, a short-term identity. So I have an immediate family. Now watch this. I have an immediate family, the sheriff family, and a father that... I have an identification with that has affected me in some measure or some degree, and i got to deal with that. All right, the second major identity that we all have that affects, that affects us greatly or identification is Adam. We all came out of Adam. That's your long-term identity. Your long-term identity is Adam. We all came out of Adam. Years ago, a man named Alex Haley produced some movies and films on, on roots, and he in, intended to help a, a demographic group feel better about who they are based on their roots. And it did nothing for no one long term. You know why? It had a major flaw to it. Alex Haley, while he probably intended to do well and meant to help people, he, in the searching of his roots, didn't go back far enough. He, he chose to stop at a certain point, and that's not going to change anything. If we're going to do a Roots movie, if we're going to figure out our roots, we need to go all the way back. And if you search our roots out, every one of us, black people, white people, red people, yellow people, uh, brown people, if you search our roots back far enough, you come to two places, a drunken sailor and Adam. Some of you are looking perplexed. We all came out of Noah and his three sons if you stop at that boat. But if you go further, we all came out of Adam. Now, Adam was from above in the sense of God created him, but watch this. How did God create Adam? From what did he create Adam, especially his body? From the dust of the earth. Isn't that right? Do you realize all dirt is five basic colors and all of man make up five basic colors? You've got red men, yellow men, you've got brown men, you've got black men, and you've got white men. And all dirt make up that color. There's yellow clay, there's red clay, there's, there's brown dirt, there's black dirt, and there's white dirt. That's called sand. All the colors of man came out of Adam, the original man. And if we go back far enough, we have an identification there. And guess what? In Adam, we're all messed up. I don't care what dirt you are, you're messed up dirt. You're guilty, you're condemned, you're under judgment, you're a sinner, you're without hope, 
You, you need God desperately in your life. You're not better than anyone else, and you're not any worse than anyone else. We're all just a mess through identification with Adam, and we've got to deal with it. All of us have to deal with it. Now, your third major identity is Christ, your new identity. The first identity, I have an immediate family and a father. The second identity is a long-term identity, and it's the family of man. We're all in the family of man. In Christ, we're in now the family of God. And just like in your first family, immediate family, some things are just, you're born with it. And just like that long-term family of Adam, the family of man, we all inherited certain things. Sin, death, guilt, condemnation. Aren't you glad in the family of God we have some similarities in Christ? Made the righteousness of God the head and not the tail above and not beneath. Blessed coming in and blessed going out. Obtain mercy, the nation of God, the Israel of God, the Jew of God. Blessed coming in and blessed going out. I'll stop right there. I get too excited. I'm so glad I didn't preach right there. Because I can't hardly sell that with just getting excited. Because I didn't get that from my earthly father. I didn't get that from the father of the human race. I got that from the Lord Jesus Christ and faith in him. And it happened, boom, just like that. I went from being a nobody to somebody. I went from being a loser to a winner. I went from being the tail to being the head. I went from being below to being above. I went from being a victim to a victor. I went from being overcome to overcoming. I mean, I can go on all day. All because of a new identification that as I'm renewed to it, it affects my identity. Who I am now in Christ dominates my world. Now go to Isaiah chapter 9 and I am going to share something I believe with all my heart. If you'll open your heart, it's going to rock your world. It's going to rock my world no matter what happens because it's highly controversial. But I believe that God has given me an answer to a difficult, a difficult question. And I believe you're going to open your heart and at least get something from God. Amen? Because we're that way in this house. I've never asked you to drink the Kool-Aid, okay? You don't have to believe everything I say or, or teach or preach. But today, I've been here 22 years, going on 23 years in just a few months. I'm at least asking you to take a sip at the Kool-Aid today, okay? Because this is going to be different. It's going to hit you at first with, whoa, I haven't heard this. And I'm not saying I'm the only one that understands it or sees it. I, I just know it's not taught. And I just know for some of you, it's going to be, wait a second. So, instead of even sharing my controversial explanation of a difficult verse, I want to set you up first with a concept of fatherhood and fathers. Father can be specific and father can be general. The word father. We know when we talk about the father... We're being specific and we're talking about the heavenly father, God. Amen? But we all have earthly fathers. Adam was the father of the human race, meaning we came out of his seed. Fathers have seed. And fathers produce things, okay? Now, the effect of fathers and an identification with your father is profound in people's identity. Many of the sexual problems that men have today is either from the lack of an identification with a father or a twisted, perverted identification with an earthly father. Women suffer in a lot of their emotional makeup today, their identity, because they didn't have a father or a messed up father. Fathers affect things profoundly, and even psychologists today are beginning to see, wait a second, what we've done to the culture is not good. Kids without fathers are not good. Fathers affect boys big time in their masculinity. And fathers affect girls in their femininity. Did I say that right? Woo! I'm not going to try again. Their feminine side, believe it or not, the father affects the feminine side of a daughter and the father affects the masculine side of a son. And our culture hates fatherhood. Our culture has attacked fatherhood and I believe is under a demonic delusion to destroy the home and marriage because we got to get fathers out of here because you can't destroy the nation except you remove the fathers. And except God turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to the fathers, the land gets cursed. Fathers and an identification with fathers affects every part of your identity. And I want to just explain that in a, a big way. Now, because of my doctrinal statement that I'll make in about 10 minutes, I need to give you some verses to back up what I'm saying because I will be hammered for this. 
And I'm fully aware of that. And I don't mind that. I caught myself being defensive in the last service. Uh, but if you're going to come at me, you better have some ammunition because I've got some.